You know, I think sometimes we're always waiting for a sign to get started about what God clearly told us to do. I, I, sometimes I think that if Jesus himself walked down the aisle this morning and said, this is what you should do, he said, Lord, send us another sign. That's what the Pharisees did, wasn't it? Lord, send us another sign. Even God himself come down on earth. We need a sign to show us what we need to do. You know, uh, I was watching some videos this week of, uh, of uh, Benny Hinn. I don't, don't advise that. But, uh, I was watching some videos of him. And he was making a claim uh, that at the day of Billy Graham's death, uh, this is what's supposed to start a, a great revival, he said. But I have to say, who has to die for you to do what God told you to do? What has to happen for us just to do what God clearly said to do? If that's what God has clearly told you to do, you need to do it. Quit making up a sign that I have to see. Welcome to Go Ye Into All the World. Today's sermon deals with putting out a fleece. Maybe you've heard that Christian phrase before. When people say it, they're saying that they want to see what God's will is by seeking for some kind of a sign. But is that really what that means? The phrase actually comes from Judges chapter 6, verse 36. I'm going to read that for you. It says, And Gideon said unto God, if thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. Now, it sounds like Gideon already knew what God's will was. Maybe putting out a fleece is really about something else. Let's go ahead and get into the sermon today and find out what it truly means. When we want God to, to give us some kind of sign that we're supposed to go ahead and do what he's told us to do, we often put it in our own perspective. Now, listen to what is said here to Gideon. Now, he's already had the clear word from the, the angel of the Lord that he is supposed to go and save Israel. He's supposed to gather together this army to save Israel. He's heard what God's will is. God told him in verse 14 he'd have the victory. God showed him that miraculous sign in verse 16. But we'll see here today, going to ask for two more signs to show him because he wants to know. Now, is it because he wants to know what the will of the Lord is by getting the sign? No! Gideon already knows what the will of the Lord is. Gideon's told, been clearly told what the will of God is in this. There's no doubt, is there? If God spoke to you, like I just said, if Jesus walked up here today and he gave you a message clearly telling you what you are to do, I think I've got one. Would you do it? Would you do what it clearly tells you to do? What hinders us from that? It's not because we don't know what the will of God is. It's because of the three eyes about us. Three eyes. One is our own insecurity. If I step out and do something for God, somebody's going to laugh at me. I used to think that a lot. Sometimes they do. <laughs> Somebody's going to think something odd of me. I mean, I, I'm just not comfortable about this, God. You know, faith is all about stepping out and doing what God has said. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't faith saying, I don't know, God. I'm not sure of things. I'm just going to trust you through this. So there's this one eye of insecurity. There's another eye of inadequacy. Many of us think that we could never stand up and do what God told us to do. Amen? When I felt the call to preach, I'm not sure I can do that. <laughs> Go up and, and preach? When I felt led to pastor, I'm not sure I can do that. You know what? Ain't none of you can. You hear me? God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. You hear God will make a way for you to handle whatever He's told you to do. He will. There's no doubt about it. Insecurity, inadequacy, or inferior. 
Many of you just think you just ain't good enough. You do. And that, that's probably a good place to start because God does a lot with people who just don't think they can do it. They're just not good enough. He takes some of the... I mean, look, at, look at what a Gideon was. He's down here carrying down in this little place over here out of the way trying to hide from the enemy. And God says, Oh, thou mighty man of valor. Oh, thou mighty man of valor. Folks, there are some of you who just don't realize what God could do with you if he just get a hold of you. You hear me? God could do mighty and great things to you if you just get these things out of your head. Your insecurity. Who cares if they laugh at you? Who cares what everybody else thinks? Do we truly believe that all that matters is what he thinks? You hear me? Is he not the only judge? Is he not the only one that matters in this whole congregation today? Right? So if you're not doing what he told you today, do, who are you letting down? God, Jesus, you're letting down the one person that matters for all of eternity by not stepping out and doing what he said to do. Now, I remember as a young man, I wanted to witness but I was scared to witness. You know what would keep me from witnessing to somebody? I was insecure. I was insecure. I, didn't, I thought I was scared to go talk to this person. I thought they are going to laugh at me. They are going to say something about me. Or I, was, I felt inadequate because I didn't ha know how to, to tell somebody about Jesus. And I also, I felt inferior because, you know, if you knew me a little better, you probably wouldn't think I ought to be behind this pulpit sometimes, right? Folks, neither of y'all need to be behind it either. I mean, think about it. Ain't, there's none of us good. No, not one. We've all sinned and come short. Listen to this, this verse in Hebrews chapter 6. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, God doesn't lie, we might have a strong consolation. It means you feel better about all this. <laughs> Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. We have a hope that is sure and steadfast, yet we are afraid to step out onto that hope. We're saying, no God, make my toast look like Jesus today. Then I'll know. Make the pastor do a dance today. Make, make, make Scott sing today. Now that would be a miracle. <laughs> Folks, the truth is that we need to just trust God and listen to His will and do it. Right? If God has said this is what to do, and He clearly says in His Word certain things that we are clearly to do, why don't we just do it? Why don't we quit making excuses? Now look here at verse 37 and 38 in Judges chapter 6. Gideon says this, Behold, he knows what the will of the Lord is, but he's worried about that insecurity, he's worried about that inadequacy, he's worried about that inferiority. And he says here to God, he says, Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor, and if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wouldst save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. I don't know I can trust you, because I don't trust you. That's what you're saying when you say I need a sign. I don't trust you, God. And it was so, for he rose up early on the morrow, and thrust the fleece together, and wringed the dew out of the fleece, and a bowl full of water, a bowl full of water come out of that fleece the next day. God has clearly showed him this sign of what he is to do. Now this gives me an idea here of what there's the wrong and the right reasons for a sign. The wrong and the right reasons for a sign. Uh, in Luke chapter 7, starting at verse 20, if you want to turn over there, you may. John the Baptist, he's in jail and scared. Now, remember who John the Baptist is. He's the one that looked out across and he seen Jesus coming in the way and said, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. He comes and he baptized Jesus. He hears the voice there. There's a voice going on. Uh, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And he, he, here he's been baptized and, and, and all this has happened. And he says, I must decrease and he must increase. But then they put him in jail. Then things got hard. Then things got a little scary. You know, I, I trust that's who you are, Jesus. I, I said that's who you are, but now I, I'm a little bit scared. And here you'll see John the Baptist asking for a sign. Look at Luke 7, verse 20. He says, When the men were coming to him, they sent these men while John the Baptist is in jail. They said, John the, uh, they said 
John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Remember, John, the, John baptized him. John said, that's the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. John did all this. But now he's waiting to get his head cut off. And he's getting a little worried. Things are upsetting John. And in that same hour, he cured, Jesus this is, cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And to many that were blind, he gave great sight. He gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. He needed encouragement. He needed to see. But, but was those things not going on already? Were the miracles all, not already occurring all around? But John got his eyes off the truth of who God is. He got his eyes away. And Jesus didn't do anything that he wasn't doing every day, you see? It was no different than Jesus' every day. Hey, we're going to do a few thousand miracles a day. This is just what Jesus did as he was preaching, as he was going through all these different towns. You see, what we do is we close our eyes to the clear signs that are already there in front of us telling us what God wants us to do. We shut our eyes to it. And God graciously, sometimes he'll shake us up. He'll shake us up. Say, hey, don't you see the sign already? Don't you see what's going on around you? Don't you see what's happening around you? We don't need for monkeys to jump out of the, the choir loft. We don't need all that. God is doing miraculous things right now all the way around you, folks. And God understands when a man or a woman gets hard, it's hard on their journey and their feelings say one thing. But your will says another. And God understands and He looks at you today. You who are hurting, you who are broken, you have been torn down by all these different things. He says, just take a closer look and you'll see me. Take a closer look. Some of us don't see God in the details because we don't look. We keep our eyes shut, which gives us the wrong reasons. The wrong reason is in Matthew 12. Now, John was in jail, right? John was in jail in a bad shape. But there were some Pharisees who were walking around. And they were freed up. They could go anywhere they wanted to go. And in Matthew 12, starting at verse 38, he, tell, he talks to them, and they asked for a sign too. Matthew 12, 38, Then certain of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Wow. Master, we would see a sign from thee. Who's the master? Right? But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas or Jonah. Folks, the Pharisees are sitting here. They've just watched Jesus come along and heal a blind man. They've watched Jesus do all these miraculous events, do all these different things. Could you just go ahead and show us a sign that you're who we're looking for? They knew who he was. They knew what it was. And they were making an excuse. See, excuse sounds a lot like the eyes, doesn't it? Excuse, if you were a uh, little illiterate, I guess you might spell it. Excuse, right? With an I. But it starts with an E. You see, there's a difference in an excuse and, and you being worried about your insecurity, your inferiority, or, or, or your uh, inabilities to do things. There's a difference in that. There's a huge difference. God understands that we're weak, and, but when you're sitting around, you're making excuses. Making up some kind of excuse for not doing what God has clearly told you to do. You're in the wrong. And Jesus has no problem whatsoever telling these Pharisees that they're wrong. And it's clear. They don't really want to sign. They don't want to do what God's will is. When we come here to church on Sunday, do you think that when David and the group gets up here and they sing, they're up here singing for you? No. They're not. They're singing for God. When I get up here and I preach, I, I'm not preaching for you. I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. I'm not up here like I'm some kind of entertainment. This isn't a theater. This isn't a stage in that sense. 
We are up here worshiping God, and we are the church. When are we going to be the church? You understand? Do you get my grift here, what I'm talking about? This isn't some kind of an entertainment thing. You didn't come in and sit in the movie theater and, and we, we watched a good show that Pastor Scott put on. No, that's not what's going on here. I'm giving you the Word of God, the will of God for what He says for your life and now you're supposed to do it. This is an interactive thing. You understand? You should do what God is clearly telling you to do. Here's some examples. Perhaps that you're living with your boyfriend. You go home tonight and you lay down with him in bed. You are in sin. It is God's will that you get out of that condition. You understand? If you are living together with someone, you are in sin. Why does I know that? Because that's what God's Word says. And if you are doing that, you need to repent of that. God's not going to have monkeys jump out of the choir. He's not going to have all these things happen to show you that, you know, I get a sign. Maybe He doesn't want me to do that. He gave you a sign. It's clear as day, right? It's clear as day. That maybe you're saying, well, God, I really feel like I want to take part in the church. I want to get out here and work in the drive through But I need a sign to do it. The, the sun should come up on the left side instead of the right side today. No! God said, go out and witness to all the world. If you're working that night, don't come. That's okay. But if you can, try to do what God wants us to do, Right? This is an interactive thing. It's not something we just say, hmm, hmm, should I do this? Should I not do this? God has clearly said in His Word, what should we do? When you're witnessing, when you want to witness to somebody and you think, hmm, I'm just waiting for the right opportunity. I'm just waiting. When God clearly gives me the sign, I'm going to open my mouth. Well, you know, sometimes God gives us those little stepping in points where it's a good time to step in. But folks, God don't give you tomorrow. All right? If there is someone that is in your sphere of influence and, and they are lost, you better tell them about Jesus. You hear me? They could die tomorrow. Don't wait for Him to come in and, and say something. If He comes in today and says something about Jesus, that's the sign. I'm going to say it. No, it's your insecurity and your inferiority keeping you back from talking to that individual about Jesus Christ. That's what it is. You know what God's will is. You're, it's clear what God's will is. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, that was only to Pastor Scott, wasn't it? No. No, you too. You too. His will is clear, folks. This isn't an entertainment venue. This is the truth. So, so listen to what Gideon knows. He's pushing the issue back here in Judges chapter 6. He's asking now for the third sign. Oh God, you know. I just need to know. And what does it say here in Judges verse six, chapter 6, verse 39? And Gideon said to God, Let not thine anger be hot against me. He understands God should probably be angry about him right now because he just don't trust him. He's the one who, who created him, gave him blood, gave him breath, gives him everything that he has, and yet, God, I just still don't trust you. Could, could you just do this? And he says, and I will speak, but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. Yeah, that'll do it. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. What love God has for us. That He puts up with that. <laughs> that He puts up with that. I don't trust you, God. Just, just keep putting on an act for me here. This is the sign of a mature and an immature faith. Do you know what a mature and immature faith looks like? Well, Gideon here is a fairly new believer. Now... They didn't have Bibles. They couldn't go down to the Lifeway store or the Christian bookstore, pick up a Bible, sit down and read it. That wasn't possible back then. So he and his whole village before this, you'll see, they were following Baal. And they had some idea of the true God, but they were all following Baal. So Gideon here is kind of a new believer. So he's kind of an immature believer. So God is kind of working with him. Uh, he, he gives him a little extra. And God expects more of a desire for a sign when you're a new believer. But when you've been sitting and you've been a believer for going on 5 to 10 
to 15, to 20, to 25, to 30 years. It comes a point in time where we're not just babies anymore, right? We're going to live by what he said. I found these quotes online this week that kind of give you the idea of this immature believer who's really an old believer. When you say things like this, I can tell the maturity of your faith and where you're at right now. This is one quote. He says, I was thinking about getting a new camera, this person says, and suddenly our old one just broke. Clearly, God was leading us to buy a new one. Is that how that works? Maybe God was saying, I never want you to take a picture again. Throw that camera out the door, right? Follow me here on the next one. I'm still not sure if I'm supposed to move to Cancun. So I'm going to put my house on the market. If it sells within a week, that's the time frame, then that's God's sign I should go to Cancun. Maybe that's God's sign that you should live homeless and beg the rest of your life. Where does it say in the Word of God? Only one week, and then we shall know. You know? I think that's that old fellow. What was it on? Uh, Johnny Carson on... On TV, he would put the thing up to his head and he would have the, the swarm he had on and he would know what was going to happen. That's not Jesus, is it? That's not Christianity, is it? What about this one? I really want to marry this girl, but I'm not totally sure if it's God's will. Since I don't, uh, I don't know her yet, I'll take it as a sign. If she comes up to me at lunch today and asks to eat with me, then I will marry her. That might work, I don't know. So one, one person said, I'm going to close up my eyes, open up my Bible at random, and whatever verse I point to, that's God's will for me. Well, obviously, right? What did I point to? It says, and he said to them, what have I done now in comparison of you? Wow, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, it is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abizar. So I should go out and get me some, some grape juice that's been fermented and get drunk tonight, Right? See how we work things in? We make things into our own mind of what we wanted to do when we try to live Christianity like this. This is how you turn your will into God's will. You see what I'm saying? We can turn anything, we can twist it however we want it to be. You know, we talk about the news and we're all, you'll get upset. Maybe some of you don't get upset, but they know how to spin it, don't they? They know how to spin the news today. They throw it out there and... Uh, I'm not even going to get into all that. But they know how to spin it in such a way to put it, the, the narrative to what they want it to be. Well, we're not too far from it. We're not too far from it because we'll take a, a verse of Scripture and we'll spin it the way we like it to be and we'll make it into what we want, you see? But it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Don't try to spin the Word of God how you want it to be. This is how a mature faith works. As you walk with God, you begin to know what He wants. You understand? As you grow with God. Here's an example. A married couple. Some of y'all have been married for quite some time. You know what she likes, right? Uh-oh, I'm going to have some angry looks later on today. <laughs> or rather, wife, you know what he likes, right? Why do you know? Because you spend time with one another. You grow together. A relationship comes together. And as you have a relationship with God, you begin to know what He wants. It's pretty clear what He wants, right? He wants us to love one another, but not that one, right? He doesn't want me to love that one. Uh, no, He wants you to love them all, right? But we want to twist it. You know what God wants you to do. Why don't you just do it? What is today's signs? Well, there's a problem with following Gideon's example of fleece setting uh, today. We have more things than Gideon had back then. Uh, we have two powerful tools that he lacked. First of all, we have the Word of God. We have the complete Word of God. Like I said, Gideon couldn't go down to Lifeway and pick him up a Bible and begin to read it. That just wasn't, going to, that just wasn't an option for old Gideon, was it? Now that doesn't mean you just stick your finger in there and that's the verse of the day and that's what I am. No, it means you study out that word and you see how it all fits together. How it all fits together and then you clearly know what God wants you to do, right? It's pretty clear what He wants you to do. And not only that, you have the Holy Spirit. 
living inside of you if you're a Christian here today. If you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior and you wonder, why do I always feel so miserable? Well, maybe it's because you're not doing what God asked you to do. Maybe that's what the problem is. Maybe you're just constantly living uh, in this twisted spin cycle that you've created of your own that's never going to get into what God wants you to do and the devil just laughs as you sit on spin cycle in your washing machine. He does. You're just sitting there spinning around, never completing what God asked you to do. We have, uh, like when I used to watch wrestling on Saturday mornings or play video games, we have the ultimate combo effect. We've got the Word of God and the Holy Ghost both within us. And, and we want to know what God's will is. We can know it. We can know it. There's no doubt. And we say, God, show me a sign that you're real. God, show me that you're there. God's put your whole life together just to get you to this point where you could be saved and you could live for Him. I heard a story recently about a man. A man that went to go learn to be a nurse. He greatly desired to be a nurse, but he was a mechanic. Well, he went into the school system with this professor. The professor was an atheist, hardened atheist. Well, the man come in, he was a mechanic. He couldn't learn. They found that he wasn't very well, good at reading was his problem. So the professor began to explain to this man how the human body works according to how a car works. And he showed him how all of these things in the car were designed to cause this part to work and this part to work and this part to work. And the man was listening to all this, hearing all this, and he still didn't see if a car is designed and the human body looks a lot like a car that's designed, doesn't that mean that there's somebody who designed it? Right? Some sit here today and they say there is no God. Why? Because He doesn't show me a sign that He's real. He's not real. I don't believe that. Folks, He's got signs all over you your entire life. He showed it to you. Over and over again. He's like, here I am. Here I am. Oh, here's the second sign. That's not a sign. Show me a better one than that, Jesus. Show me a better one than that. Show me your real now, Jesus. Show me this is what you want me to do now, Jesus. Oh, how patient he is. Well, he certainly is patient, isn't he? Maybe today's the day that you need to step out of your comfort zone. Maybe today's the day that you need to step out and do what God has been calling you to do. You clearly know what God's will is. You, you've seen it from His Word. Uh, maybe like this program, we are going out into all the world at Sunrise Baptist Church with this television program here today. Folks, um, we're doing it because that's what God said in His Word. We would love for you to come down and visit us at Sunrise. Sunrise is located directly off Exit 23 off of Interstate 81 in Tennessee. We regularly meet Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for small group Bible studies and then at 10.50 a.m. for worship. We also meet Sunday evenings for worship at 6.30 p.m. and Wednesday nights for discipleship training at 6.30 p.m. I hope you and your family will make time to come visit with us at sunrise. And until then, remember, go ye into all the world.